Now, this is quite a discovery. Fragments of a biblical scroll, along with other relics, have been found in desert caves in Israel. Dozens of pieces of parchment were written in Greek, uh, with just the name of God appearing in Hebrew. With more, here's David Campanale. Unveiling secrets, scientists in Israel stumbled upon a bizarre, perplexing discovery that challenges our current knowledge and perspective. This unprecedented finding, hidden beneath the ancient sandy landscapes, propels us into a world where every grain of sand potentially harbors millennia-old mysteries ready to rewrite history. The peculiarity of the discovery not only captivates the scientific community, but enthralls the world, teasing the boundaries between the known and the unknown. Join us as we explore the ten of the weirdest finds that scientists just uncovered. Number 1. Dead Sea Scrolls Discovered between 1947 and 1956 in the Qumran Caves near the Dead Sea, it ranks among the most significant archaeological finds of the 20th century. This collection of Jewish texts provides unprecedented insights into the nature of Judaism and the development of monotheism during the Second Temple period, 530 BCE to 70 CE. They comprise various forms of text, biblical, apocryphal and sectarian, written predominantly in Hebrew, along with some Aramaic and Greek. The scrolls are paramount for understanding the context in which Rabbinic Judaism and early Christianity arose. They contain the earliest known copies of the Hebrew Bible, alongside a rich array of other texts that provide intricate details about the diverse religious beliefs, practices, and social and political conditions during a critically formative period in religious history. The biblical manuscripts significantly help scholars understand the transmission of biblical texts and observe textual variants. The discovery of the scrolls transformed our understanding of history and religion, the diversity of theological, liturgical and legal documents challenged previously held notions about Jewish unity during the Second Temple period. The sectarian texts, associated by some scholars with a Jewish sect known as the Essenes, unveil a community that prioritized ritual purity, anticipated a looming apocalyptic conflict and produced a vast and varied library. Moreover, the scroll's preservation is a marvel in itself. Sealed in earthenware jars and stashed in remote caves, they survived nearly two millennia in a harsh desert environment. Their discovery, study and conservation have mobilized international cooperation and debate, reflecting the scrolls' global significance and the enduring mysteries of antiquity that they hold. They remain a focal point for scholars, theologians and history enthusiasts worldwide, bridging past and present through ancient words and insights into a pivotal epoch in human history. Number 2. Masada An ancient fortress atop a rugged, isolated plateau in the Judean desert of Israel remains one of the Jewish people's most symbolic historical sites, embodying resistance, perseverance, and tragic heroism. Overlooking the Dead Sea, Masada is renowned for the dramatic siege that unfolded within its walls nearly two millennia ago. The fortress, initially a palatial retreat for King Herod the Great in the late 1st century BCE, became the last stronghold during the First Jewish-Roman War, 66-73 CE. In 66 CE, Jewish rebels seized Masada from the Roman garrison there. Approximately six years later, after the fall of Jerusalem and the destruction of the Second Temple, Masada became a refuge for nearly a thousand Jewish zealots and their families. These rebels, known as Sikari, sought respite and fortification behind Masada's formidable stone walls, providing them a defensive position amidst a treacherous desert landscape. The Romans resolved to quash the rebellion and laid siege to Masada around 73 CE. Constructing a massive ramp on the western approach, they eventually breached the fortress. However, instead of finding a bustling, defiant resistance, they reportedly discovered a macabre scene. The rebels, preferring death over enslavement, had committed mass suicide. Today, Masada, declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site, stands not only as a meticulously preserved archaeological site, but also as a potent symbol of collective memory and national identity for Israel and the Jewish people worldwide. Visitors, who often ascend to the fortress via a winding snake path or cable car, are greeted with well-preserved remnants of Roman and Jewish history, including palaces, bathhouses and storerooms, quietly echoing the stories of those who once sought sanctuary atop this desolate, yet hauntingly beautiful plateau. The tragic tale of Masada remains embedded in the broader narrative of Jewish history, symbolizing the unyielding spirit and the profound costs of resistance. Number 3. The Pilot Stone Discovered in 1961 at the archaeological site of Caesarea Maritima in Israel, it stands as a pivotal artifact, providing tangible historical evidence for the existence of Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor who presided over the trial of Jesus Christ according to the Christian Bible. The limestone block, measuring 82 cm by 65 cm, once part of a larger dedication to Emperor Tiberius, is inscribed with a Latin inscription that references Pontius Pilatus and his title as Prefectus Judaea, Prefect of Judaea. Before the discovery of the Pilate's stone, 
There were scarce historical records about Pontius Pilate outside of biblical Jewish and early Christian writings, notably the works of Flavius Josephus and Philo of Alexandria. The stone, therefore, fortifies the historical veracity of the existence of Pilate, establishing a concrete link between the textual accounts of ancient historians, religious scriptures, and the tangible archaeological record. The Pilate stone not only cements Pilate's role as a historical figure, but also affirms the interconnectedness of the political and religious climates of the era. Pilate, depicted in the Christian Gospels as an ambivalent figure, reluctant to condemn Jesus, occupied a space of power during considerable social, religious and political volatility in the region. His governorship was characterized by tensions between the Roman authority and Jewish populations, a struggle central to the passion narratives within the Christian tradition. For historians, theologians and archaeologists alike, the Pilate Stone serves as a vital piece in reconstructing the historical panorama of the early first century in Judea. This period would profoundly influence the trajectory of world history and spiritual thought in the millennia to follow. It symbolizes the potent intersectionality of history and faith, bridging the material and the sacred in the archaeological record. Number 4. The Tel Dan Staley Discovered in 1993 to 1994, during excavations at the ancient city of Dan in northern Israel, it represents one of the most significant archaeological finds pertaining to the biblical narrative due to its potential reference to the House of David. This 9th century BCE inscribed monument, created by a ruler of the Aramaic Kingdom of Damascus, commemorates a victory over ancient Israel. The fragmented stele is crafted from basalt and conveys an Aramaic victory inscription boasting the ruler's triumph over his enemies. One fragment, bearing the now famous line mentioning the House of David, has become the epicenter of extensive debate and excitement among historians, archaeologists, and biblical scholars. The phrase, BYTDWD, translated as House of David, is of paramount significance because, if the widely accepted interpretation stands, it provides the earliest known extra-biblical reference to the Davidic dynasty. Before this discovery, there had been no archaeological artifacts explicitly corroborating the biblical account of King David. The Tel Dan Stele not only potentially evidences the existence of a historical Davidic dynasty, but also illustrates the vibrant and tumultuous geopolitical climate of the Iron Age Levant. The inscription narrates violent conflicts and political machinations among the ancient Near Eastern kingdoms, offering glimpses into the historical contexts that may underpin the biblical narratives. Amidst its significance and potential implications, the Tel Dan Staley illustrates the delicate interplay between archaeology and religious tradition, highlighting the multidimensional discourse when interpreting material culture relating to sacred texts. Thus, the Staley remains a critical artifact for understanding ancient Israel, offering scholars valuable, albeit enigmatic, insights into the intricate tapestry of history, legend, and faith in the biblical era. Number 5. Bayat Shean an archaeological and historical jewel in northern Israel. It presents a vivid tableau of ancient urban life, reflecting a myriad of civilizations that have ebbed and flowed through its environs. Strategically located at the junction of the Jordan River Valley and the Jezreel Valley, this ancient city has witnessed the rise and fall of numerous empires and served as a vital cultural and trade center for millennia. The layers of Beit Sheen's archaeological strata tell stories of Canaanites, Egyptians, Philistines, Israelites, Greeks and Romans among others. Particularly significant is the biblical account where the Philistines hung the body of King Saul on the walls of Beit Sheen after the fateful battle of Mount Gilboa. Throughout its history, the city has been coveted and contested due to its strategic location and fertile surroundings. Perhaps the most visually striking remnants hail from the Roman and Byzantine periods, where Beit Sheen, known as Scythopolis, was one of the Decapolis, a group of ten cities that thrived in the Eastern Roman Empire. Visitors today are greeted by the astonishingly well-preserved ruins of a Roman theatre, bathhouses, a basilica, and colonnaded streets, providing a tangible link to the city's prosperous past. In these ruins, one can envisage the vibrancy and richness of a city that was once a melting pot of cultural, commercial, and social interaction in the ancient world. Moreover, Beit Sheen provides a lens through which scholars and enthusiasts can explore the diverse tapestry of ancient civilizations in the Levant. Every stone and artifact uncovered sheds light on the complex history and intercultural dynamics of a city that has been continually inhabited for over 5,000 years. Beit Shien, therefore, stands not only as a testament to the multi-layered history of the region, but also as a symbol of the inevitable intertwining of cultures, beliefs, and empires throughout history. Number 6. Osheries of the James The Oshery of James represents one of the most controversial artifacts in biblical archaeology, intertwining aspects of faith, history, and skepticism in a tangible form. Discovered in the antiquities market in the early 21st century, and subsequently publicized in 2002, the limestone burial box, or oshery, is inscribed with the Aramaic phrase, James, son of Joseph, brother of Jesus. 
Given the commonplace nature of these names in the first century CE, the inscription's reference to a familial relationship with Jesus ignited intense debate and scrutiny in scholarly and religious circles. If authentic, the Oshery offers a rare physical link to the New Testament and the historical figures within. James is described in the Christian Bible as a prominent leader in the early Jerusalem church and is traditionally considered a relative of Jesus. Therefore, the artifact could provide valuable insights into the historical context of the early Christian movement and its key figures. However, the Oshery's path from an undisclosed location to the global stage is shrouded in mystery and ambiguity. The lack of a secure archaeological context and questions regarding the inscription's authenticity have cast a shadow over the artifact. In fact, the Israeli Antiquities Authority declared it a forgery, though a subsequent lengthy trial did not conclusively prove the inscriptions to be fraudulent. The James Oshery thereby resides at the intersection of faith, history, and skepticism, encapsulating the challenges that often accompany religious artifacts and the exploration of historical truth. It ignites conversations about authenticity, the value of unprovenanced artifacts in historical research, and the deep, often personal quest for a tangible connection to historical religious figures. Amidst the debates, the Oshery symbolizes the enduring human desire to link the physical and the spiritual, present and the ancient past, through the medium of material culture. Number 7. Church of the Holy Sepulchre Enshrined within the Christian quarter of the old city of Jerusalem embodies a profound spiritual significance for millions of Christians worldwide. Revered as the site of Jesus Christ's crucifixion, burial and resurrection, the church has long been a magnet for pilgrimage, worship and veneration. Established by Emperor Constantine in the 4th century, the church showcases a rich tapestry of religious history, architecture and devotion woven over centuries. Architecturally, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre presents various styles, reflecting the myriad epochs, sects and politics that have shaped the sacred space. Visitors encounter a patchwork of chapels, each administrated by different Christian denominations under a complex status quo agreement. Notably, the site encompasses what are believed to be two of the holiest locations in Christianity, the Golgotha or Calvary, where Christ was crucified, and the empty tomb or sepulcher, where he is said to have been buried and resurrected. The church's spiritual magnetism draws pilgrims who navigate its dimly lit, incense-infused spaces to venerate the sights of their Saviour's suffering and triumph over death. Throughout the year, the church is also the stage for numerous liturgical celebrations and processes, including the emotionally and spiritually charged Easter celebrations, wherein the Christian narrative is vibrantly brought to life through liturgy, procession, and collective worship. Moreover, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is a testament to the complex, often contentious relationships among different Christian traditions and the broader socio-political dynamics within Jerusalem. It symbolizes the unity and division within Christianity and provides a potent physical locus for faith that transcends denominational boundaries. Navigating through its aisles, one encounters the multifaceted dimensions of religious devotion, tradition, and history that have been layered upon this ancient site, making the Church of the Holy Sepulchre not merely a monument of the past, but a perpetually unfolding tapestry of living faith. Number 8. The Megiddo Ivories excavated from the ancient city of Megiddo, also known as Armageddon, in modern-day Israel, represent a staggering array of intricate artifacts, unveiling the prowess, wealth and extensive trade connections of the Canaanite city-state during the Late Bronze Age, circa 1550 to 1150 BCE. These ivories, discovered in the 1930s and 1940s, were part of furniture and other elaborate objects, serving as potent symbols of status, luxury and artistic virtuosity. The ivories are adorned with many images, encapsulating the interactions and mutual influences among the culturally and geographically diverse ancient Near Eastern societies. They exhibit motifs and techniques suggestive of Egyptian, Mycenaean, Mitannian, Hittite and Syrian styles, reflecting the entwined relationships and cultural exchanges that flourished among these civilizations. In a material sense, the presence of ivory, sourced primarily from elephants in Syria and the upper Euphrates, bespeaks the extensive trade networks and the opulence that permeated the Megiddo elite. Artistic renditions range from depictions of individuals, animals and mythical creatures, to elaborate scenes of warfare, hunts and peaceful activities, offering multifaceted insights into the aesthetics, beliefs and daily life of the ancient inhabitants. Moreover, the Megiddo ivories illuminate the cosmopolitan nature of the city, where the confluence of empires, traders and artisans from varied regions stimulated a vibrant, shared and interconnected cultural milieu. These artifacts, through their material and artistic narrative, speak of an age where boundaries were permeable and where the artistic tapestry was woven from threads of disparate origins. In essence, the Megiddo ivories provide not just a lens to gaze upon the luxuries of an ancient elite, but also serve as tangible witnesses to the ancient world's complexity, 
where people, goods and ideas were in constant motion, weaving a richly textured and interconnected historical tapestry that still compels and fascinates scholars and enthusiasts alike. Number 9. The Neolithic plastered skulls discovered in several prehistoric sites in the Levant. It unveils a mesmerizing glimpse into the spiritual and cultural practices of Neolithic societies around 9,000 years ago. Found in locations like Jericho in the West Bank and Ain Ghazal in Jordan, these human skulls underwent a unique post-mortem ritual. They were plastered and painted to recreate human-like faces, often with shells inserted to represent eyes, conjuring an eerie semblance of the deceased. This fascinating funerary practice reveals complex beliefs concerning death, ancestry and spirituality within these ancient communities. While the precise meanings and purposes behind the plastered skulls remain enigmatic, scholars posit several interpretations. They may represent a form of ancestor veneration, where the plastered skulls served as tangible links to forebears, preserving and honoring their presence within the community. Alternatively, they may have been used in rituals to sustain agricultural fertility or to establish social cohesion within these burgeoning settled societies. The plastered skulls exemplify the marked shift in societal structures and belief systems during the Neolithic period. As communities transitioned from mobile hunter-gatherer lifestyles to settled farming, their relationships with the environment, each other, and the metaphysical world underwent profound transformations. The act of plastering skulls may signify a means to navigate the complexities and anxieties of this new sedentary existence, using ancestral presences as stabilizing and legitimizing forces in increasingly complex social structures. These intriguing artifacts raise questions regarding humanity's enduring preoccupation with mortality, memory, and spiritual belief. Through their silent, expressionless countenances, the plastered skulls provide a visceral connection to our Neolithic ancestors, prompting reflections on the universal human desire to comprehend the unknowable, to negotiate the finality of death, and to seek continuity amid the ephemerality of life. Thus, they stand as timeless emissaries, communicating the complexities and profundities of human belief across the chasm of millennia. Number 10. Hazer, a pivotal Canaanite city Hazer, an ancient city strategically perched in the Upper Galilee region of modern-day Israel, stood as a pivotal Canaanite center, amassing monumental significance through its extensive history over 2,000 years. Identified with Tel el Qaeda, Hazer flourished particularly during the second millennium BCE, becoming one of the foremost cities of the Canaanite civilization. Its archaeological and historical narratives interweave layers of political power, cultural confluence and biblical law, making Hazer a rich field for exploring the interplay between tangible artifacts and intangible legends. In its prime, Hazer was an epicenter of trade, politics and military endeavors, with its formidable size and fortifications reflecting the city's grandeur and strategic importance. Archaeological excavations, initiated notably under the directorship of Yigael Yadin in the 1950s and continuing to the present day, have revealed opulent palaces, temples and substantial administrative structures, attesting to its stature in the Canaanite epoch. Hazer's significance extends into biblical history, wherein its conquest by the Israelites under Joshua is vividly narrated in the Hebrew Bible, Joshua 11:10, 13. The city's destruction by fire, as described in the biblical account, aligns intriguingly with archaeological evidence of a substantial conflagration. This interplay between text and archaeology incites ongoing debates among scholars regarding the historical veracity of biblical narratives and the complex socio-political dynamics during the transition from the Canaanite to the Israelite period. Today, the ruins of Hazer, encompassing both the upper Acropolis and expansive lower city, beckon scholars and visitors alike into a tangible dialogue with the ancient past, offering a glimpse into the life, beliefs and politics of ancient Canaanite and Israelite populations. Hazer is a potent symbol of ancient cultural intersections, political machinations and the eternal human desire to understand our ancestral narratives through the fusion of earth and artifact.